Hello and welcome to our Property Perspective Podcast, a podcast where we aim to talk about different perspectives on property, the industry and anything we find interesting. I'm your host Nick Cowdy and I am a real estate prof- professional so and the principal at Cowdy Real Estate. <laughs> <laughs> so today's topic, this is the second podcast we're doing and we're very lucky to have Jamie Goff, James Goff as you are professionally known as. I go by, I've been called worse. Yeah. I go by anything. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I go, well, James is my real name, but, you know, I, I don't mind being called Jamie. Yep. Yep. Um, from Christchurch City Councillor, and you are the councillor for the Fenelton Ward? Yeah, elected by the Fenelton Ward, but you make decisions for all of the city. It's a bit of a pet hate of mine, actually, when yeah. people, you know, protect their patch. You've got to take that holistic view. Absolutely. Um, you've been pretty much elected for your professional career, right? Well, I used to work actually in property, not real estate, uh, mm. as a broker, but uh, I worked for my uncle Anthony for, for many years before, and that was sort of um, where I first started dealing with council, yeah. um, with the Central City Business Association and that sort of stuff, as he chaired it at the time. So I was at Hereford Holdings, which was you know largely commercial property, yeah, development, but management, and there was some hotels and... Uh, Real estate, um, uh, sorry, a retirement village development, which was, you know, took up a bit of time. And anyway, um, that was my day job. Mm. And I found myself on the community board, or I ran for the community board back in 2007, which I was pretty young, and balanced that with professional life, and then uh, ran for council in 2010. So it means I've been there for about 13 years now. That's a, long a time. Decent, that's a decent time. Yeah, um, so I'm the grumpy old man in the council now. <laughs> So you the lo- are no, you the I'm not not y- the longest standing. Yanni Johansson has that um, that accolade. Ah, yeah, I remember when I came back to Christchurch, and I think yeah, 2010 must have been around there, 2009, yep. 2010, and you were um, face was plastered all around the city. Yeah, it's uh, the, the election is a horrible sort of part of it, but it's a necessary evil. <laughs> um, yeah, and you you put yourself out there and. Um, subject to all that sort of criticism and stuff like that um, and essentially reapply for your job um, and and you either uh, thrown out or endorsed to continue representing them. So I'm really fortunate that, um, you, you know... You haven't been I, thrown out. No, you look so so surprised. No, no, I mean, it's, yeah, I guess it's like pitching for a job every year and saying I'm the best at this and there's well, all every these three other years. three and, years. And, and, and you know what, so it should be. And my view's always been it hasn't wavered from this is that, you know, I, I've got my skill set or professional background, uh, you know, and what I kind of stand for and that's been shaped by my experiences and, and whatever else, just just like anyone does. And I think, look, I'll, I'll say what I believe in. I'll say what I think's best. If people agree agree with me, back me. If they don't, well, then I don't deserve to be there. And uh, and that's the way it goes. Um, and, and I think it's just the way it should be. So yeah, I consider it a real privilege to, um, to, to be in the role. I don't really think of myself as a politician, but uh, I definitely enjoy it. And, you know, I, I really... Uh, uh, there are some times when it's tough and everything, but I think, you know, looking back, you know, I'll, I'll be really proud of, you know, the contribution and stuff that I've been able to make. And, and you know, to have an opportunity to shape the city that's your home, mm. that you love and you're passionate about, and now like me as well, you know, you're, you're a, a father with a young family. Mm. I think it adds that whole uh, another layer of importance to it. Absolutely. Uh, and I thought I was passionate before having kids, but now, you know, being a dad, I think it gives it so much more meaning and um, you take a probably a longer term view on things and, and I think that's great so I, I think I'm better in my role mm. as you'd hope so now than you know I certainly was but that's like anything you're always growing and learning and challenging yourself to be better absolutely um are you the most opinionated counsellor well that's subjective Nick. <laughs> um I like I like but the reason I say that is because I what I what I like is that you voice your opinion if it's popular or unpopular you're quite passionate about how you um, voice that, which is I'm enjoyable. No, I'm no shrinking violet, and I don't think anyone's going to die wondering. But, you know, I think as, as you get older, you learn to pick your battles mm. better, and there's no point uh, spouting off like a madman if it's not going to achieve anything. So, you know, I, I like to think that I pick my battles with that, um, and there's no point wasting a whole lot of time and energy if it's not going to move the needle. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you know, I, I, I've got my views, and... Um, I, I try and raise them in a constructive way. Mm. And, and I think, you know, there's sometimes there's a time to, you know, whether it's standing up to Wellington over issues or, you know, and, and, and fighting for your community and your city. You know, I think that that's what your community expects of you. Um, but you, you can't do it all the time, uh, particularly if it's not going to achieve anything. You, you've, got mm. to, you've got to be calculated. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, so just around what topics we're going to talk about today. Should turn my phone off, but anyway, the there's two sort of main topics we want to chat about, which is we've got the new RVs that have just come out, yep. and they are effective in August. Or are they effective now? We've uh, got from from the next uh, well, from financial year start. So th this rating round that we're going into. Yeah. So nothing to Don't. do with August. That's last. That's when they were dated, which was last August. Correct. I think. That, yeah. That's when the valuation. That's the point in time when they're taken from. Yeah. But it will be for for this coming financial year. Yeah. Perfect. And then which the other one, one. July. For yes. To clarify that. Yep. The other one, which is a hot topic at the moment, or it has been in Christchurch for the last year or so, is the MDRS or the um, medium density. Yeah. PC fourteen. Residential something. Intensification. Intensification. Um, yeah. Which just popped up actually after uh, Jamie agreed to come on with us then the week after there's been discussions around that. So interesting to talk about. But so the first part is the new RVs. And I think we get it a lot selling houses and real estate. It's obviously a, a needle or a thermometer, I suppose, to what – is happening in the market. It's, they've obviously gone up quite a lot in the, from the last um, the last round, which the market has gone up a lot, so that makes complete sense. And you know, owners will either look at it in it being gospel to the value of their house, or buyers might see it. Well, basically, people choose how they want to interpret it, and will use it to what suits them. Same with real estate agents, funnily enough. Totally. So what? Is the purpose of them in the first place? Well, look, in terms of a, a valuation or, or um, RV 101, it's, it's really that um, councils rate you know, for, for, for services. And, uh, and, it, and it really is a tax because it's not a user pays. Mm. Um, you know, there are plenty of things until I had kids. You know, I don't think uh, I'd uh, walked into a library since I was probably you know, a student, obviously, mm. so, uh, and <laughs> probably a young student as well. <laughs> so, uh, um, though, uh, I think there's an understanding of that. So people, are, people aren't, you know, and uh, whether it's swimming pools, you know, um, three waters infrastructure, which is another hot topic, but, you know, all of the things that councils do to make the, make the city run and whether you use them or not is, um, is not really the point of it. So mm. it really is to not beat around the bush. It's a tax and, mm. and, and it's written in legislation that way. So, to to rate a tax or to charge a tax, there has to be a line in the sand. Um, I don't think it's necessarily the perfect system, but um, you know, perhaps perfect doesn't really exist, and you'd be looking for a long time. But it's generally accepted that um, capital yep. value, you know, which is a combination of land value and improvements, uh, is an indicator. And and you sort of alluded to that before, and that's all it is. It's it's an indicator, and um, that they they pick a year, so the point in time, and, and this one was one August. And uh, QV conduct ascent, which is quotable valuation or uh, quotable value, um, essentially do a desktop exercise based on. So it's a pretty uh, to say it's rough and dirty or something like that. I think is is not necessarily true, but it, it's you you haven't got a professional valuer that's knocking at your door, looking around at e every corner of your property. They they look at all the things that you would expect. You know the comparative sales, the size of the dwelling, the age of the dwelling, improvements, all that sort of stuff, mm. and it spits out a number at the end. Some yeah. people agree with it, some people don't. A fun fact, I suppose, with it is that you'd think that a lot of people, um, you know, given how uh, important rates are to people and how uh, you'd see, you know, potential buyers and stuff like that asking what the rates are, mm. it's, it's the most of the, the challenges yes. are, are around um, when uh, people don't think that it's high enough, so they're usually a yes. seller. Yep. So they'll go to QV and say, no, no, um, we, we think that it needs to be bumped up, mm. which is uh, something that I learned a while ago, but it surprised me. Um, so it's actually the other way, where people think that the, the rateable value should be higher. But anyway, um, I, I think that sort of sums it up. So it, it's a tax for council services, mm. and, um, and, it, and it essentially is uh, the capital value of your property as assessed by QV at a point in time. Yeah, because it's quite a mass exercise to give a value to every single property in in the is it the whole country that does it at the same time or just city? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know what time that they're conducted in other centres because yeah. I end up pretty focused on Christchurch. Yeah, of course. That's the same. Um, and that's why I don't even think about it yeah. until I just said that. But certainly in, in terms of um, in terms of how, how rates are charged yeah. for all the metropolitan centres and stuff like that, so councils ac across the country, that's mm. um, that's the accepted way and that's 
consistent. Yeah, because it goes both ways, I guess. We have, obviously, these times that we're trying to help people get theirs increased because it's, it hasn't included a massive renovation or something like that um, that's gone on there. At the same time, I probably would try and get mine decreased because I think it's gone up too much and I don't want to pay extra rates for a house I'm not going to sell. It goes both ways because, you know, the other side of it too, you know, and, and I... I tend to agree as a, a knee-jerk reaction. I, I um, see my rates bill or something like that or, or see there's an increase and you go, oh, well, I'd actually rather <laughs> it be less because I'm not selling anytime soon. But then in saying that, you know, um, on paper you're wealthier. So if you want to uh, use it as security and borrow against an asset, then, mm. then banks uh, will usually take, you know, RV as a, as a line account. in the sand. Yeah, well, they'll take that into account exactly. Yeah. So they're usually quite keen on that. So, you know, if your valuation does go up, it does essentially mean, you know, and there's – exceptions to this but in yep. theory that you 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 um are wealthier and yeah. and that you can borrow against that asset because i think i don't think there'd be any that have gone down in the city um, well unless yeah unless the house is being bowled over yeah exactly yeah we've changed it um what and i probably could read somewhere about this but i haven't actually can i actually stop you there because yeah. there will have some they probably most of them will have gone down since the first of august last year though Yes, that's right. So, so that's, that seems to be the barometer at the moment is it's uh, the rateable values mm. because it was around, I think the peak was about February. So the rateable exactly. values in August and, you know. Yep. Uh, I, I talked to a valuer a while back and he, and he basically said a third will be right high, a third will be low and a third will be about right. Yeah. And that's just the mass um, exercise. Yes, so, so, it so it will have come back a little bit just because, it, as you say, there, there was a peak there and that's dialed back with – you know, obviously the cost of living crisis that we're in, mm. in the middle of and, um, you know, in, inflation, interest rates and the yeah. like. So but it won't from the 2016 valuations. Yeah, they're all gone up. Um, That's why property's a good investment. Yes. The So when the council's looking at charging rates, if your RV has, say, doubled, does that mean your rates bill would double? So answer that is no. Yeah. And, it, and it's one of those things that I, I think the natural inclination is for someone to look at that and go, and I, I, even for someone who's been on council mm. since 1860, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I even have to check myself there for a moment where I see, you know, your RV yes. go up and I think, oh man, what are my rates going to be? And yeah. it's just, it's not like that at all. It's a complete misconception and it's a difficult thing to, to explain because people mm. um, quite understandably think, well, if, if their rateable value has increased, then the amount that they're going to have to pay in rates increases. Mm. And that that's not the reason for it. And the reason for that is that rates are not charged at a percentage of your capital value. Great. So if rates increase on average for the city by 200%, mm. as in they, they've doubled, yeah. then, and, and let's say the council, so ye every year they put together a budget, which is called the annual plan, which is how much they plan to spend and what you'll get for your rates. Mm. If they don't, and this isn't a perfect arg argument because councils in invariably do end up adding things on and they do spend more than the year prior, but if they did absolutely that, they had the exact same capital program or operational and capital spend as last year, and your uh, rateable value had doubled, your rates will be exactly the same amount. Right. Because it's how how the pie is sliced up. Right. So that pie then is a consequence of the new valuations grows, but how it's divvied up is still exactly the same. Where you will then pay more, and this is to bring it back to real life terms, mm. would be, well, the council actually does tend to, to, to spend more than what they did the year before. And then when you're in an environment like this where there's, um, you know, labour shortages, uh, supply shortages, all these sorts of things, and, and the pressures of around cost of construction and all that sort of stuff, and a capital programme with, you know, hundreds upon hundreds of millions of dollars on that, and, and again, hundreds of millions of dollars on an operational um, uh, in, in terms of an operational spend, so stadiums to build. Yep, but again, it's not all done in one year, so that's spread out o o over a period of time. Yeah, um, I think the punchy part for that is looking at uh, twenty twenty four. Right, but twenty twenty four. But um, but in, in saying that, they do spend more usually because they add more projects, and you know what? As as anyone in Christchurch doesn't need to be reminded of this. Um, stuff happens. You know, stuff does happen. Black, black swans do crop up there. Yeah. And, you know, whether in Hawke's Bay or Christchurch in 2011, you know, unplanned events occur. So you can't plan for everything. And, you know, as mm. they say, the, the one thing you can guarantee is the 
unexpected will arise. So councils, obviously, and, and everyone else you yeah. know, has to move accordingly. So councils invariably do spend more money mm. year on year, uh, which contributes to that. And then the other thing is people... You know, they're not static in their homes. Some some people might add another bedroom or build yeah. a garage, or and which is obviously the improvements component. But if you've made no improvements to your home throughout that rating period, and you have a high valuation, mm. um, then it, it, it essentially isn't going to change. Except there are there are uh, exceptions to that, which might be, for instance, Halsall would be a good example where there has just been so much development and new yes. facilities out there that the land value has actually increased disproportionately yep. to the rest of the city. Sure. So you're seeing that in a lot of areas um, out east, perhaps right. around like Avonside, um, mm -hmm. Linwood, um, those sorts of places where I think um, you know there, there's been quite a lot of investment, mm. um, arguably, uh, and I actually think quite correctly, undervalued, and that's sort mm. of caught up. So, so their rates then will the rates rise might be proportionately higher. They are yeah. wealthier, yeah. but it also means higher higher rates. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. It's a hard thing to explain though, because people yeah, people is. people I guess assume and, and it's natural to that the rates will essentially be a percentage yeah. of of their capital value. Yeah. And, and that's not the case. It's so council's got a budget, they've got to spend and that they're going to spend in that year and that's divvied up proportionately. Perfect. Well that's probably explains that quite well. Um I don't, know, I don't know if it's explained quite topic. well, but I, I certainly tried to. It's, yeah, uh, it well, is a difficult thing to get your head around. Though. I think that's people's main concern is, oh my God, my my rateable value's gone up this, no. my rates bill's going to go up like that. So no, that's good. But um, the uh, the M MDRs, the intensification rules seem to be a bit of a... So my understanding is that the government made these decisions and they said, here you go, Christchurch, Wellington, Auckland, uh, New Zealand, basically. New Zealand. Councils do what we tell you. And Christchurch was the only one who said, hey, hold on, not in our backyard. Um, let's step back and think about this. Mm. So it was the rules being the intensification of basically the whole city mm -hmm. to be able to build three level townhouses or three three level townhouses. I can't remember if it was on 450 or 400 or 500 square metres. Um, basically basically everywhere in, in, yeah. in a relatively small footprint. We call it the three by three, which is, as you correctly say, three storeys high, three townhouses, yeah. in areas where most people will have expected it to be a lower density style of living, mm. uh, where there would just be you know one dwelling there. And then around malls... No parking with them too. Oh, uh, no. Um, <laughs> around malls as well, it's up to... Not, not my idea. I voted against it. I, I know. <laughs> Well, these kinds of split, uh, yeah, and then if, six if stories you're around key activity things, centers. People are quite pro it because yeah. they can develop it more. And then if you live in a we or just a one bedroom, uh, sorry, not a one bedroom, a one level house, and say we one of my houses is in Papua Nui, then you're probably reasonably worried about it. And in that area, actually, because it's close enough to the mall, but it's quite mm -hmm. far away, I think it's f six stories. Mm -hmm. um, which is quite interesting. So what? So what? It's in consultation. Is that right? Is that the right word for it? Yep. And well, no, it's not. Well, the, they're notifying the plan change is the correct right. terminology, I guess. Which is essentially that. So it will go to an independent hearings panel. So, so what does that? What does that mean for for the listeners to what's actually happening in there? It means, so in, in terms of what happened, and, and I don't want to, to bore the listeners today from it, but in, in terms of like a bit of quick background, you, you, you're pretty much there with that. The, the government said, and across party as well, so this isn't, uh, this isn't just National Labour, they work together, mm. and uh, along with the Greens and others, and uh, they said um, there's uh, a housing shortage. We, you know, there's, um, we don't have enough stock, house prices are too high. What we're going to do is uh, force councils um, to, to notify a plan change which is uh, essentially has, um, you know, and it's more technical than this, but in, in yep. most areas, in terms of Christchurch, what it would be, it would be, as you say, you know, uh, three storeys high, three um, three units. Then in uh, uh, other key areas, uh, close to main traffic uh, or transportation links, malls, that sort of stuff, six storeys high, no car parks as well. Um, and that's... That's obviously quite worrying, and it wasn't just you and I that were worried about that. Mm. You, had, you had all of you know Christchurch, really, or a large proportion of them that said, "Hang on, you know th this isn't right." And and I think my view, and it was shared by you know a lot of those in the community, which I, um, I think was a really key point, is that this felt very much like an Auckland solution 
cut and pasted and rolled out across the country. So you've got a yeah. whole lot of things, you know, that that I don't think are right um, with that. And we can jump into it later if you want and unpack some of it. But then what happened after that is our council, which I was really proud of, mm. uh, gave the proverbial middle finger to the government and said, get stuffed. Like, yeah. this doesn't work for Christchurch. It's not in our city's best interest. We're not notifying it. What are you going to do? And what they did do was send, they didn't, uh, they could have fired the council, but it's not a particularly good look. Um, no. Because, the, you know, then you obviously have no representation. I think they actually saw that the council was doing, in my view, exactly what a council should do, which is yes. stand up for their residents and advocate for them and make decisions that are in the best interest of the city and the people that they represent. So for me, it was a really proud moment as a mm. councillor to to see um, our council take that stance. I think it was a strong one and a brave one, and, and I think it was the right one. And actually, yeah. as a side note, you know, I know um, Phil, when he's been at mural forums, um, Phil Majors had a lot of other mayors that have commented to him and said, man, we wish uh, we'd done what you guys had done. We thought that we had absolutely no no chance and it would be our yeah. head uh, in the guillotine or on the floor <laughs> if we didn't. Um, but we should have ta- we should have followed followed you guys. But we were actually uh, one of the last cabs off the rank Yeah, and a lot of others, others had rolled over earlier. Then what happened from that is the government put in uh, an independent investigator mm. um, and... A, a guy that really worked with our, our staff and the community as well and um, and really uh, tried to put together uh, a take two, something that was within the intents, uh, the intention of mm. um, what was trying to be achieved but making it a bit more tri- Christchurch-centric and try and mitigate some of the concerns that uh, were felt widely in the community. So, so what levers have they plan. been... Have, is a sort of recession plans coming into it yeah. or something so, like that? So, what, so what really changed... Important. And was brought back not that long ago was mm. essentially intensification in 2.0, yep. which was um, they they scaled back uh, the areas where it was the six stories high. So a good mm. example of where I just didn't think this worked is look, I look at my wife's parents. They used to live on the hill pre earthquake yep. and um, lost the house in the earthquake, and um, they had three children. You know uh, and. Um, thought, you know, it won't be long until we're, we're grandparents and stuff and, and into semi-retirement. We actually want to be a bit closer to them, um, mm. you know, pub around the corner, Hagley Park nearby, that sort of stuff, a yeah. uh, bit of a backyard so the grandkids can come around and we can have Christmases here and everything. And that they made that lifestyle choice and they moved sort of in between Rickard and Fenelton Way, yes. which was going to be um, right in the thick of six storeys high. So they live mm. in a, in a two-level two house with a nice backyard and just a, a, a great home for their stage of life. Because the context of those areas as well is, is a lot of, of single level or you know larger properties. It just yep. seems completely out of context yeah, exactly. to have these bigger yeah. properties. So, so for them, they would could have had six storeys on their uh, north, east and west boundaries, mm. um, which is you know just you know crazy really when you think that they've made a choice looking at the, um, the district plan mm. and with with the sole purpose of saying, well, we want to have a, a suburban style of living um, with that sort of amenity value. And I kind of yeah. think if, if you want to live, you know, uh, uh, somewhere where there's high high uh, densification, then, you know, Lip apartment living in the central city is fine. So where I kind of sit is I'm not opposed to intensification at all. Yeah. But I think it's got to be in appropriate areas. And I think the Absolutely. crux for, for me was that this wasn't done appropriately. And, mm. and I agree that it was a copy-paste for something that, that suited Auckland. The other thing, going back to what changes were made, so that was dialled back mm. and there were so more qualifying areas, which essentially means exem- exemptions added. Sure. And the other thing, which was quite a big one too, was the the recession plans. Like I can go into the more of the technical element of it, but we'll, you, it's no recession fun. Recession plans are just going to protect sunlight. Yeah, so di- dialed back a bit and, and recession plans, yeah. which you know essentially you know means that uh, it, it's more rela- or more permissive, I guess, for you to build higher than if yeah. you are in an area where you know you can build a high density uh, development uh, dwelling or do a yeah. development like that. That you have to basically um, n- not go so high on your mm. south boundary because that's where the north, um, that adjoins the northern uh, f- aspect for your neighbour. Yeah. And then it's a little bit more permissive on the east and west, but and then um, m- uh, more permissive or most permissive on the north because that's yes. obviously the south yeah. for, for the neighbour. So I think that was really good. Yeah, and I absolutely. Think, I think the issue also there was that all of the work that was done was based on where the sun sits in the sky in Auckland and the North Island mm. as well. And it's actually, again, quite different for Christchurch. Right. Other, other things that you know hadn't been taken into account were the fact that we're a very flat city, yes. whereas uh, uh, the, uh, the regulatory framework which was being imposed, and I use that word mm. uh, on purpose, 
um, was really for topography that was not ours. It's for hilly topography with mm. uh, a sun that sits higher in the sky than it does does for us. So I think there were some sensible changes there. And where it mm. got to is it was, in my view, I think it you know it was a lot better thought out. The, yes. the 2.0 plan, I think, was better. But just because something's comparatively better, I don't think that that makes it, it makes good. It right. So I voted against it still Yeah. because I think good luck trying to roll a council um, you know, in an election year, and if it, it doesn't work for your city, then stand up and say that. So yeah. I still don't. I don't. Th- I certainly don't think it was perfect. I think that it was better, but I still don't think it was yeah. where we'd need it to be. Because one of the big goals is to get how many people in the central city. Well, the goal that's been consulted on and endorsed by you know the community um, is to have twenty thousand people living inside Christchurch's yeah. central city by twenty twenty eight, and I'm really passionate about that. You know, mm. I guess we talked right at the start um, about my professional life pre-council and yes. it worked you know, in the Central City and I was on the Central City Business Association board and I think what's really understood well and people do get this is if you want a, a Central City to work that's going to be um, you know, the, the melting pot for all of the city and, mm. and, and if you have a, a heart of a city that works then the rest of the city will benefit from that. Well I so think everything does doesn't it because you get more people in there which creates a community around in the, in yeah. the city as well which means all the shops mass. All your public areas, everything's yep. more looked after because people, it's people's backyard essentially. Yes, so exactly. it's, it is a really positive thing if, if yeah. it can get it happening. And there's the no silver bullet for any of these things. Um, so, you know, I apologise for oversimplifying it, but I, I think that if there was one thing that you could do to really uh, help get a central city working as well as it could to fulfil its potential, mm. it's people. Absolutely. You know, it's not rocket science, it's just it's people, people, people. Mm. So if, um, if we have an opportunity, and this is the thing, this is... Obviously, the earthquake was tra- a tragic event, but yeah. you've got to find the positives in that. Um, yeah. You know, if we're going to be able to get by and be better a- as a result of it, and mm. you know, I don't know how often people sort of say, "If only I knew, no, knew, knew then what I know now." And mm. I think we look at the city, and it was the central city, and there were a lot of things that were broken, you know, metaphorically before mm. uh, before the earthquake, and we didn't get the the living element of it right. If you look at the international cities. Not even ones that are wildly out of whack with population, but those those cities have got a strong residential component, and we didn't yeah. really. So my view, very strongly, is that we, we've got to do whatever we can to get people living in in, in the, the heart of our, of our city in the four Avs. So, as you say, you, we've got a goal of having twenty thousand people living in the central city by twenty twenty eight. We yeah. currently we currently have only just got back the population levels that we had the day before the earthquake. So wow. it's taken us twelve years. Yeah. Uh, or 13, yeah, 12 years now, um, to to get back to 10,000 people living inside the four Avs. So my view is, you know, connecting up with, um, I'm not against intensification, I'm not against intensification in appropriate areas. And I think what, for me, it seems really counterintuitive to open the floodgates yeah. uh, on intensification in areas in suburbia where people have made a conscious decision to move there and live there because mm. that's the style of life that they want. But obviously, uh, in the central city, it's just so important. I, my view would be fill your boots inside the central city, relax yeah. the the the, um, uh, the regulatory framework, and start at the core first. Absolutely. So that that's the issue I have with it, and I'm just afraid that you'll get perverse consequences as a result of that. Yeah. Oh, that was all very interesting. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. I reckon we could do another half an hour on this. Um, I'll come uh, back any time, mate. Yeah. Well, well thanks fun. so much for coming in. And uh, really interesting and looking forward to seeing how the city develops and grows. Oh, thanks so much. I appreciate it. No worries. Thanks for listening.